So on the show today, Nita Little. So Nita is one of the founding figures in the contact improvisation world, uh, works with activism, very thoughtful person in the dance world from what I can see. Um, I'm in contact myself and I kept asking around, I kept saying, you know, who's is a deep person, who's a psych, working with psychology, who's a thinker, who's interesting in this field that we could get for the conference. And I think that Nita's name was the name that came up most often. Um, so I said, you know what, ahead of the conference, I'd really like to interview her. So um, Nita, welcome. Thank you. Mark, it's nice Good to get to know you. <laughs> Pleasure. Where are you in the world today? I am in the Seattle area, out of the fires, thank God. West Coast Good. fire. West Coast is on fire right now. Glad you're okay. So how did you get interested in the body, Nita? How did it all start for you? Oh my God. That's, that's a question <laughs> that takes me back to probably being three or four years old when there was no distinction between body and mind and I was simply dancing. I was probably born dancing. And um, I have been dancing since then. And so okay. there was never a time when I wasn't interested in it. Is it dancing as a kid? Did you become a professional dancer? Did you do any particular dance studies? What happened yeah, next? And I have a fabulous dance background. Got to study with some amazing teachers, everyone from Jose Limon to, I studied at the Graham Studios with Takako Asakawa with, um, um, in ballet with um, um, Alfredo Corvino, Maggie Black. I have just, just um, classes with uh, really Merce Cunningham stars. I really have a really wonderful and blessed background in contemporary dance, modern dance. And then um, I went to college, to Bennington College, and got to um, work with Judith Dunn and people who were interested in improvisation. Um, Bill Dixon, black jazz musician, uh, and they were partners. So I had that orientation um, uh, into that, in, that kind of channel into dance improvisation. And from there met Steve Paxton, he was new faculty. And almost immediately Steve and I started working in a studio, um, exploring those materials that became contact improvisation. Okay, so this is the famous Steve Paxton. Uh, how was that in the early days meeting him? Oh, you know, he was a beautiful Adonis curly hair in his 30s, early 30s, and um, had just come from working with Cunningham Company and worked with um, a fabulous improvisation company. And um, he was, he was um, challenging and interesting. He also was an Aikido practitioner, did... Um, my background so I this when I first did contact right. I was like oh it's like Aikido without the throws right. you know so he taught he taught us some um, Aikido roles there were three of us in a studio quite frankly me and two men and Steve we were exploring um, materials of being in touch and so I learned Aikido roles <laughs> but then it immediately of course since our interest was not in manipulating each other, but rather in how is it we negotiate this moment, this right. incident. And that was a huge difference, even though the underlying principles like such things as weight falls to the underside, those principles remain constant for both forms. The, uh, the, the interiority of it is very, very different. The logic of it is very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's certainly the purpose of it as well. Like, like, what are we doing here? Even if there's shared sort of functional, structural type things, it's a very different activity. Yeah, e extremely different. So my interest is in how do so, I... Yes, uh, how did it get born? What was the idea or the initial? Well, I had, as I said, I had been interested in improvisational scores. And so um, in Steve's very first class, it was a compositional class, 
He said, bring in something you've been working on. And I'd been working on this negotiation between two people coming together. I'd made a piece, two people coming together down on the floor and having to negotiate who would end up being on top of the other person standing. You know, so one person is standing, the other person is on their shoulders or, or higher. <laughs> and, um, and then that decomposes back down to the ground and they go out. And so I was, I was struggling with this, this construction, this improvisation, what we would call a score. And um, I wasn't really struggling with it, but I, was, I, I was, had questions about it. And um, he said, let me take you into a studio and show you how not to get bruised. So we went to a studio with the young man I was working with, who really wasn't a dancer yet, but was learning. And um, we started to work on that kind of set up an inquiry that then, of course, proceeded and went much further, much further than my tiny little score. Because mm -hmm. it, that context that we started to investigate, how is it people come together and stay together? Right. And in terms of, you know, it's difficult because I'm sure we'll get into it, it's this moving, evolving thing. But in terms of when people say, what's contact improv? For non dancers, you might not know technical terms. Um, you know, would that be the study of how people come together and move together, how people make contact? I mean, in some ways, it's an incredible, simple, simple idea, right? At the beginning, yeah, beginning sure contact way makes it not so simple. Shared way, right? Uh, but if you were to describe it, you could. I've seen people say, "Look, here's the basic idea, not the, the practice of it, of course, but the basic idea." People can convey quite quickly, in the sense that it's it's not um, a complicated notion like I don't know capoeira or something. Yeah, it is. Um, um, it, it, one could say that it is um, a dance sport. That, um, terms um a woman dina devita um uh, coined but i think steve used a lot uh to describe the structure in which people come together um in share sharing weight in physical contact remaining in physical contact um through a duration and they uh sorry my phone just rang and i thought i had right. it stop. <laughs> and yeah. um, and they um, and together they negotiate movement that that takes them th into having to manage together the the physics of of motion. So we work with momentum together. We you know, we work with um, weight and supports the, the the vast variety of structures that can. Uh, arise while you are in physical touch. So it looks something like um, it's not wrestling because you're not fighting, you're not trying to undo one another, but you're certainly in as deep a contact. You, it's not, um, it's n not manipulation. The, um, one of the early agreements was that we do not manipulate one another. We do, I do not make your choices for you. I can communicate to you possibilities, but I do not make your choices. So unlike, unlike partnering at the time that was, was going on, a man was not lifting a woman up into the air. We don't lift one another. In you fact- do things people as such, right? This is in some ways quite radical. You don't pick a person up, do a thing to a person, throw them on the floor. It's always do, a conversation, right? Exactly. We do not do things to each other. We offer the possibility that someone could um, be above and, and um, um, be on top of another person. Be some, one person could be supporting, the other person could be flying. It can look quite dramatic, like body surfing, or it could be very gentle and rolling on the floor. It's got, right. There's all these possibilities, right? Depending on the mood and the dancers and the, you know, everything between. Exactly. It's, very, it's, it's actually quite stunning at times. And, and, uh -huh. and the physics of it um, make it look terrifying to people because they aren't inside able to hear the interior conversation that's taking place, which is happening within milliseconds. 
this mutual oh. listening and I've always found it a wonderful practice for developing sensitivity for really tuning in to, to each other and that yes. mutual listening makes it much safer than it could be I was always surprised how few injuries there are in contact given you know this sort of what could be quite extreme situations right exactly I mean I don't think I've ever had a real injury and I've done some wild things <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so um the, the agreements of any art, I think, are almost the, the, the sort of the rules, you know, the, so the agreements there are what? Oh, I have had one injury. Okay, one. I, I had one injury. Years. I'm just <laughs> remembering this one injury. I was in, I was teaching in Italy. Um, uh, I met a guy who did contact tango or tango contact. Uh, uh, uh. And he, he immediately took me and flipped me. I mean, with force uh, up on, on around his, sh and my arm was not in a, in a position that could manage that. So he totally I... um, strained my arm. And, and that's why we don't manipulate. Right, right. Uh, there's no leader and follower in contact. It's not a tango dance in that sense. Okay, okay. So if there's no leader and follower, people might say, well, how does it work? What, what would you say to that? Um, uh, um, you are offering, the moment offers possibilities and potentials that you are together sharing as much as you know about that moment and those potentials and somebody's making a choice.